guys can see the router contract there. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, uh, yeah, look, following up from last week's educational series where we, you know, did a deep dive into uh, interacting with the router contract directly to facilitate um, a swap. Uh, to reiterate from last week's fire, fire, Fireside series, uh, the purpose of, of, of this is to familiarize yourselves uh, with basic smart contract interactions. And some of the prep work required, uh, you know, for, for these interactions, um, being able to query reserves, you know, uh, converting small numbers to big numbers, vice versa, establishing epoch timestamps in order to set deadline parameters within the smart contract. Um, so this week we're going to be changing up the format a little bit. Um, we figured that it would be fun for the community to actually see a live demonstration take place rather than me sort of just running through slides and ambling, um, as well as giving you guys the chance to participate in real time. So for this approach, I'll be part, like basically pasting each step uh, in the fireside chat live. So if you guys as participants want to basically just copy paste and just follow what you're seeing on my screen, um, you know, you can carry out the actions in real time, making this a truly interactive session for those who wish to participate. I feel it's really cool to, you know, cater to um, all different learning types. Me personally, you know, I'm a kinetic learner. I learn by, you know, physically doing uh, what I'm watching. Um, you know, other people like to learn by reading, um, et cetera. But I just figured that this would be a really cool way to, um, you know, engage and interact with you guys a little bit further. So without any further ado, um, today what we're going to be focusing on is essentially making a liquidity pool using the router contract directly and then breaking a liquidity pool or, or you know, withdrawing an LP um, out of the router contract directly. So first off again, you know, as per last week, for those who uh, joined us last week, um, you know, there's, there's some prep work that needs to be done, some prerequisites that need to be done. Um, so I'm going to paste these in the fireside chat real quick. Um, and I'll just run through these with you. So for you guys, those who are wanting to participate, um, feel free to just uh, open up a, a spare window in your browser and, um, and have these at the ready. So we'll go through these real quickly. So what I've just pasted in there is the router contract. So this is used directly for making the liquidity pool as well as breaking the liquidity pool. We used the same contract last week for facilitating a swap. Um, you know, this is one of the one of the main uh, smart contracts associated with our AMM. Um, next, we'll need both respective token contracts. So again, you know, we're going to be using Spirit as an example this week. Uh, Spirit Phantom, just like we did last week. So you need the Spirit token contract. Uh, you'll also need the Wrapped Phantom token contract address. Uh, we'll also need the LP contract. Um, so that's for querying the value of the liquidity pool. Um, and also, again, you know, the two tools that if you were here with us last week that you'll be familiar with, which is the uh, ETH converter tool and the Epoch time converter. So hey, without any... Nick, FYI, like we don't see a Discord, just wanted to let you know, but that's fine. Like, You don't see what, sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, is it? Discord. We just see our, our browser. Yeah, that's fine. You know, that, 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 okay. that's cool. Um, basically, I'm going to, yeah, if, so if you guys check the fireside chat, I just tagged everybody there. Um, basically, all of those resources are there for you guys to use if you want to. Um, and again, you know, you guys can just follow me on my screen here uh, where I'll basically be taking you through the process of, of how to fill these parameters out. So first off we'll we'll go back to the router contract which is what you guys should be seeing already um, and you'll notice that there's a bunch of different uh, functionality options up here you know there's add liquidity add liquidity eth remove liquidity um, basically you know th these these are the functions that you'll be interacting with um, you know these are the functions that we used last week uh, you know swap exact eth for tokens swap eth for exact tokens etc those are your swapping functions um, but today the functions that we'll be using and focusing on is function number two which is add liquidity eth now we can use um, 
function number one, which is just add liquidity. But if we were to do this, um, it would require using wrapped phantom, uh, which is an extra step. Um, so if you use add liquidity ETH directly, it will basically wrap the phantom that you're using for you to deposit into the liquidity pool. So first off, um, once we've found function two, uh, the first parameter fill out is add liquidity ETH. So this is the amount of phantom you want to pair uh, with your counter token. So in this example being spirit, we're gonna be pairing spirit with phantom. So in today's example, I'll be putting in 10 phantom. Now note from last week, uh, there's no uint uh, 256 here, so that means you can actually use a small number, you don't need to use a, um, a big number uh, in this parameter field. The token address um, is the counter token that you want to uh, make an LP with. Uh, in this case it would be Spirit, but you can use this for any other token, could be Liquid Driver, could be um, Grim, could be uh, Oath, whatever you want. Um, the main thing to remember is we, we don't need, uh, or the main point of difference between um, you know function one and function two is function one, um, you know you you could be adding any other token. So if I wanted to pair say Liquid Driver and Spirit together in an LP, I'd ha I'd be having to use this particular function here. Um, but because we're using native token, um, the only other counter token or only other token address that's applicable um, is the spirit contract address. So for this, we'll click through to the spirit contract address, which I prepared earlier, and we'll copy and paste that uh, into that parameter there. Perfect. So the amount token desired, basically this is the total number of spirit that you want to add to the liquidity pool. Um, but to get this figure, uh, it basically requires a few side steps. So first we have to query the pool size to identify the ratio of phantom to spirit, just like we did last week when we were figuring out how to do a swap. So to do this, to query the LP, um, we need to go to the liquidity pool contract that we want to interact with. So this is the Spirit Phantom liquidity pool, um, which should be this one. Yeah. Uh, whenever you go through to a liquidity pool, if you're wanting to sort of, or a liquidity pool contract and you're wanting to identify, um, you know, exactly what particular, uh, if you're unsure of, you know, what the LP may be, if you just click on this drop down box here, uh, that will usually give you a good indicator as to what comprises of that liquidity pool. Um, sometimes the reason why you see random tokens sitting in here is people will accidentally send uh, tokens to this contract address, um, at which point they're sort of un unretrievable. But um, yeah, if you if you're basically wanting to identify what compri what you know what comprises of that liquidity pool, just look for the two tokens that are sitting in there with the most amount of value attributed to them. Um, so right. What we were doing is we we're essentially wanting to query the LP. So for this, we're going to go to read contract, and we're going to scroll down um, to actually. I should probably be posting this in the chat. My bad, guys. There you go. For those who want to use it, um, and we're going to be scrolling down to function number eight, which is the get reserves, get reserves function. So we'll query this and that will give me an updated figure. Um, so what we then want to do is we want to take these two reserves and we want to go to our Ethereum converter, which everyone will be familiar with. And essentially what this is doing is it's breaking down a big number into a small number. And what we'll do here is we'll take both of these reserves, break those down into small numbers. And once we've got those small numbers, we simply divide them by each other. So what, what we're wanting to do is divide the amount of spirit, which is around about 80 million uh, in the liquidity pool, uh, with the amount of wrapped phantom, which is around about 4.3 million, uh, in order to get the spirit to phantom ratio, which gives us 18.75 respectively at this point in time. 
Um, so now you have the spirit to rat phantom ratio. We want to multiply this by the amount uh, that we plan to add to the liquidity pool. So in this case, it's 10 um, because we have already put or specified that we're wanting to pair this with 10 uh, phantom. So all we're simply going to be doing Taking that, multiply by 10. Everyone should know this number. It's going to be 187.5. So we will then take this and convert this back to a big number because that is the format that is required. And we'll be putting that into the section here. So next, we, uh, we need to have a look at the uh, amount token minimum, um, which again is a uintager 256. The amount token minimum is the, the basically the same process applies. We can take that number that we had previously, which was 187.5, and we want to add slippage here. So this is basically saying this is the minimum amount we want to add before the transaction uh, fails or reverts in case there is um, you know, a huge amount of price action that happens in between the time of us uh, outlining these parameters and actually signing off the, um, the smart contract uh, order. So for this, we'll take that number and again, Multiply by 0 0.95, which, you know, again, you can multiply by this by whatever. Um, you know, probably 1% slippage is more than ample, but, you know, just for the sake of this, uh, I'm going to go with 5% slippage because I'm a degenerate. <laughs> and uh, we'll convert this figure again back into a big number. Um, so if you're converting small number to big number, just remember that goes in the ether field and then the wave field is the big number that you're pulling out here. All right. So just to confirm with you guys, so far we've specified how much phantom we're wanting to add to the liquidity pool. The token address that we're going to be uh, interacting with is the counter token. Uh, we've got the amount of spirit desired. Um, so that's basically 18.75 paired with 10 phantom. Then the minimum amount, which allows for 5% slippage. Minimum amount ETH uh, is pretty easy. Um, essentially, all we're going to do is, again, um, take the 10 phantom and multiply by 0 0.95. Um, this is a pretty simple figure. Obviously, that's going to equate to uh, 9.5. So we then just convert that and add, essentially, 18 decimals to it. Now, the two address is your address. That's fairly simple. Um, so we'll copy that from up here, which I already have connected. And then the deadline again, this is where we use the time converter. Um, we'll just go to an extra day from now. Hit the human date to timestamp. We'll copy that figure and then paste that in the deadline section. So great, we've filled out all of our parameters now, but there's one additional or a few additional requirements uh, before we can actually ship this transaction. So next we actually have to appren approve spending for both tokens. So had you ever swapped in the past, um, this would already be approved depending on you know what approval parameters you set, uh, whether you listened to my security presentation a couple of weeks back or not. Um, hopefully uh, some of you guys would be you know, restricting your spending limits on, on this kind of activity. But for those of you who have obviously just gone for the, uh, you know, the unlimited option, um, then you guys would usually, you know, just be all right to write this and ship this transaction. I mean, you could try it. And if you find that it's failing, it'll usually be because you have an approved uh, spend of these uh, tokens or assets. So to do this, what we're going to do is we'll go to each respective uh, token contract. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to do say spirit as an example for now so we'll go to the contract for the spirit token write contract and we're going to connect our wallet and we're going to go to function one which is uh you know pretty easy pretty obvious approve uh so the spender address is obviously going to be your address spending these And the amount, again, you know, um, I would recommend setting it as a, restric as a restricted parameter. 
Uh, so the most amount that we're going to be spending in this transaction is 18.75 um, to the 18th decimal, which is 187.5 spirit tokens. We put that in there. Um, again, helpful hint, again, for, for people who really don't want to have to keep approving spends, if you go minus one, uh, that will basically give you um, unrestricted approval. So we'll go ahead and write this transaction and ship it. And that's basically approved my tokens for spend. We would again do the same act, carry out the same activity, uh, roof the wrapped phantom contract as well. So now that we've gone ahead and approved these transactions, we can then go back to the token contract and the router contract and write and ship this transaction. Maybe I do need to approve the Just going to be approving the spend for the phantom here because it looks like maybe I hadn't done that. Means that timestamp's changing. Here we go. We'll go for a few days ahead. So I'm getting an error here, um, and it's looking like it all has changed. Did Did you approve the token spend by the router? Uh, that's only for withdrawing the liquidity, is it not, Heesh? Um. So you got to do what token is that? Uh, Phantom and Spirit. Okay, so um, yeah, you'd have be to the router approve contract. the router on the spirit contract. Yeah, open up the uh, open up the spirit. Oh yeah, you are correct. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so you already did this approval? Yeah. That's just why I'm wondering. Yeah, the reserves could have changed, and maybe that set the min down or something like that yeah it's just weird that it would have changed because i allowed for five percent slippage so um 
There you have it, folks, the uh, the perils of a live demonstration. <laughs> I ran through this several times yesterday and it was working uh, just fine, so I can't actually understand. We'll need to debug the data here as to um, why this is actually failing. What we could is look at doing... 18, is that 18.75 uh, or 8, like 187.5? Because you're adding 10 FPM. Could be, yeah, it could be that maybe I didn't convert that number. Give me one sec. That seems correct. 10 FPM. Yeah. Yeah. Pre execution is failing. And Make sure I've got the right car, right wallet hooked up. Yeah. How strange. Make, make amount token desired as, or amount token minimum as zero. Just, just go. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to go full send here. Full send, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah pre execution failed. Interesting. Oh. Is that on Ravi or MetaMask? Ravi, yeah. Mm. But I haven't had issues using Ravi on here before, so. Yeah, let's see. And you showed the time is correct? The deadline? Yeah, yeah, I just updated the timestamp. Um, I'm not actually too sure why the router is not allowing for this. Everything should be fine. So wait, wait. What, what is the time that you used, Nick? Just confirming. One thirty-four. Uh, it's, it's on the it's on the thirteenth, though. So oh, a few days ahead. 13th. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's that far away. Like, can you put? I, I, I've never tried like a deadline that far out. Maybe I've, make I've it it. Oh, you have done it again. Okay. I've I've done it by ten days before, so um, okay. it really should be fine. There should be no reason. So let's maybe just query the pool again. Yeah, most likely that's what the issue is. Someone just went and did a massive trade just to absolutely cuck me during this uh, demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was sneaky. Bear with us, folks. Uh, just be grateful that we have a UI to use and not absolutely fucking contracts everywhere. <laughs> nah, that looks fine. Eighteen points and five. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's check the approval again. I think that's something with the approval for sure. As he always mentions to me, like. Oh, dude, value is 9.5 over there, and then you're trying to send 10 over there. No, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, true. That's why. Yeah, that's, that's why. why. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to uh, take that. We've put the minimum amount. Yeah, you put the minimum amount, but you're sending in 10 mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. So that's where we went wrong. So that's interesting, actually. If I went minus one. That should have been Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess the controversial thing, like, that was the mistake that the Scream devs had made uh, when they had approved the FUSD collateral to be infinite. Uh, just as an FYI, guys, like, instead of setting actual number, they had set it to minus one, which made it to be infinite. And that's why people were able to borrow, like, against that. Like crazily. Yeah, so I'm still getting a um getting an error here. So. Huh. Oh no, there we go, it's gone through. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There we go. Yeah, so the mistake I made here, guys, was I was a approving a spend for um basically approving less than what I was actually spending. Um so if we then go ahead and click on here, we can review the transaction and see that that has now created the liquidity pool, uh, Spirit Phantom. 
Moving on, uh, what we'll then do is look at how we can actually go ahead and remove liquidity now. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated as removing DLP at a later stage uh, will mean that both assets have changed since depositing the LP. So you need to actually figure out how many tokens you now hold in the liquidity pool. So the resources we'll need for this exercise are all of the contracts, the liquidity pool contract, the router contract, both tokens, um, and obviously the ETH converter and epoch, um, epoch time converter. So the same resources that we used last time. So this time we're going to query the total amount of liquidity pool tokens that we hold. Um, to do this, we'll use the LP contract. And what we want to do is go down to section number five and query balance of. So what this will um, basically do is it will tell me how many LP tokens I actually hold. Uh, I think this figure yeah, has changed slightly um, since last time. This was this was one that I did previously, but we're going to take note of this figure. We'll copy that, and we're going to convert that. And essentially, it's saying that I hold that many LP tokens. Um, so what we're then going to do is we're going to go back to the router contract, and we're going to go down to the section or function that says remove liquidity ETH. So remove liquidity, again, is just like adding liquidity. Um, you'll need wrapped assets. So if you're going to use this function, you'd need to wrap the phantom first, or you'd use this function if you were uh, removing liquidity for tokens uh, that aren't phantom. So if you paired, say, Oath with Spirit or Oath with Reaper or, or whatever, um, you know, the, the, this is the function that you'd use. But for this one, we're going to be removing, which will essentially give us uh, phantom directly once we pull our liquidity out of the pool. So under function number four, the token address section is going to be the spirit token. Now under liquidity unit U integer 256, um, we basically, we, we figured, you know, this is the figure that we queried in step one. So this is a big number, so there's no need to actually convert this. Uh, we can just copy paste this straight into this section here. Now the token minimum amount, we can just set to zero. Same with ETH. We basically want to pull all of our liquidity out of here. The to address is your address. And then the deadline, um, again, we'll go to that epoch time converter, copy the same deadline. Now, before we approve this transaction, again, there's one more step that we need to do. We need to go to the LP contract directly and we need to write and and connect to metamask so lp contract i'm going to write now under function one we're going to go to approve but this time we're going to approve the router contract. By approving the router contract, you're essentially letting the router spend your LP tokens as the router is the one that will basically be taking those LP tokens, breaking them, and then distributing the individual tokens back to your address. Uh, for the value, we're just gonna put minus one here. Uh, make sure to revoke this later on if you do do this because it's allowing for unlimited spend of those LP tokens. We'll sign this off and approve. That's now been approved. So now we can go back to the remove liquidity ETH section. We can click write contract, and hopefully this time it works. There we go. We're gonna sign this transaction off. And once this loads, hey presto. You've got your tokens back. 
So there you have it, folks. Um, <laughs> bar a few awkward, uh, a few awkward um, technical difficulties. Uh, that is how you make and break an LP using the router contracts directly. Um, we'll call it a day for now and revert back to any questions about this process um, or spirit swap in general that you guys have. But look, I hope you guys found today's demonstration helpful. Next week we'll be covering how to deposit and remove LP tokens directly into the gauge proxy, so essentially allowing you to farm via direct smart contract interaction. Um, we'll look at uh, continuing our educational content then. Uh, one final request from me is, you know, if there's anything that you guys want me to cover or want to learn more about, um, please pass these requests on to our mod team so they can arrange for me to prepare uh, this content for you in advance. Uh, but for now, guys, thank you very much for your patience and time. Thanks for bearing with us with that, uh, the awkward downtime there. And um, I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you guys now around, yeah, any questions you may have about the presentation or or, um, you know, if there's anything surrounding spirit swap, there's one thing that I think uh, we should be discussing, and that's um, there, there was someone who made a proposal uh, last night by the looks of things. And look, I, I, I think this, this is really great. I think it's awesome that we actually have the community starting to get involved uh, in these proposals. Um, but there is kind of like a, a process for these things as well. Well, it is, you know, completely autonomous and anyone can make a proposal. I think it is always best um, and, and it kind of does allude to this in our, uh, in our Commonwealth section uh, around, you know, structure and, and organization and templating of, of these proposals. Um, but I feel like we should definitely be having community dialogue around these things before they're pushed. Um, reason for this being is there can be certain nuances or aspects um, about spirit swap or the internal workings of things um, that perhaps the community don't understand before making a proposal. Um, and one thing that was overlooked in this proposal uh, here, which I am personally a fan of, I, I, I can understand why this people are wanting for this to happen, um, but it is not possible in its current iteration uh, due to the factory contract not allowing um, for these this fee structure to be changed. Uh, Heesh can go into more detail around the technicals of it, but the fact of the matter is is that it's just not doable. And had we maybe had this discussion in a fireside chat before this person made the proposal or had this person actually um, made their intentions about making this proposal clear on the uh, Commonwealth Forum, um, you know, we probably could have nipped this in the bud without wasting any time. What I will say, however, and a little bit of alpha here for you guys, um, is even if this proposal did get passed and enacted on, uh, V2 would pretty much instantly make it redundant. Um, and the reason for that being is uh, <laughs> V2 is basically this proposal, um, but on steroids. There's, there's a whole bunch more. Uh, but we've built V2 around making, uh, you know, the profitability um, as, as cushy as possible for our loyal Inspira holders. I had a look at the author of this um, proposal. I had a look at his wallet, had a little snoop around in there. He's an OG Spirit Swap user. I can see, like, there's virtually no dumpage from him. He's just a straight locker. He takes all of his – he claims all of his rewards and just keeps locking. So, um I really appreciate why this guy uh, made the proposal, but I just feel like it's um, we should have these discussions sort of in a time and a place, and that time and a place is now, you know, during Fireside, where the entire community can sort of chat with one another, um, you know, discuss various ideas and, and, and the nuances and, and intricacies around those ideas, um, just so, again, you know, we're more cohesive as a community. Um, but just to reiterate... Uh, even though this proposal isn't possible, the changes we're making with V2 will definitely um, <laughs> will definitely achieve the purpose of what this proposal was trying to achieve, and then some. Um, so yeah, I'll leave you guys with that. Ege, is there any uh, questions from the community? Jesus Christ, I'm scared to look in the fireside chat right now. <laughs> uh, Matt, actually, there's no question. <clears throat> Everybody giving their good vibes. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, if anyone wants to discuss the proposal that was made um, or if they have any other ideas that they want to have as a discussion in an open forum format, 
um, then, you know, now's the time to do it. So if anyone wants to put their hand up and chat, um, you know, that would be, that would be great. And we can bring you up on stage. Uh, more awkward time forces, please. <laughs> I live off that. <laughs> um, what was the question that you've asked? Could you walk us through the proposal? Yeah, certainly. Um, absolutely. So the proposal that was made, uh, if everyone goes to our announcements, whenever there's a proposal that's made in our uh, snapshot, which is basically you know our, our, our governance voting center. Um, so if you guys go to the announcement section and just go to one up from where uh, Nazaru made his announcement about the fireside chat, click on that link there. Essentially what the uh, proposal is suggesting is that currently um, five out of six of our fees um, go to liquidity providers of that li given liquidity pool, which is absolutely correct. And then one sixth of that fee goes to the protocol V vault. Uh, we call it spirit maker. Essentially what this, what this means is that fee allocation is used to buy back Spirit and then distribute that to InSpirit holders, um, you know, each week. Obviously, as volume has decreased on chain um, due to the bear market conditions, that's that's meant that there's been less fees captured, and less fees captured means, uh, you know, less Spirit for Spirit Maker. So what this person proposed is that a reallocation of this fee structure. So basically, two out of sixth of the fees generated go to InSpirit holders, so essentially doubling the InSpirit distribution each week, which I'm totally for, um, but it's just not possible with the current setup. We'd need to do an entire migration, which we're about to do anyway uh, with V2. Um, and in that migration process, I will say um, that what we're offering is like 10 times more lucrative than even what this proposal is making out for InSpirit holders. So this will rest assured um, be addressed uh, upon the deployment of V2 and it will be addressed in a far more favorable manner for InSpirit holders than even this person has highlighted in their proposal. Gotcha, 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 perfect. It's not a bad proposal, reminds me of the V2 whispers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like I alluded to already, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much a watered down V2. So if you guys like that proposal, you're going to love V2 if you're diehard spirit, in spirit holders. When Ferrat, you're fired. <laughs> I guess I can give you guys a little update on V2 uh, while we're at it. Um, we actually had really, really good progress this week. The mods, uh, when I, when I, as I kind of alluded to, you know, you know, when the mods are testing that it's super close. They're like our our last backstop. Um, and in turns, yep, sorry, uh, <laughs> Okaro. Um, yeah, basically all of our internal guys, once they're testing, you know, things are super close. It means that the devs have completed their final polishes and they've basically uh, gone bug hunting through their respective pages as much as they can possibly do until they're banging their heads against the wall and they need a fresh set of eyes to look over things. Uh, that's when we ship it off to the mods. So the mods have been testing the bridge page today, uh, well, sorry, this week. Um, we should be getting them testing the farm pages and the swap page uh, next week. So essentially... As each dev goes through and finishes their final run through and polish um, and debug of their respective page that they've been assigned, um, <clears throat> we're basically taking like a, uh, a Ford production line approach towards this and then shipping it straight to the mods. So one page for mod testing comes in, one page goes out, one page comes in, one page goes out, and essentially we're just validating uh, each of those pages. The next step after that will be will be uh, <clears throat> sending the entire finished product or beta um, to our key internal stakeholders such as you know multi-sig members partners like liquid driver um, scarab finance like all of our all of our close um, you know friends and family here that we have really good ties with that we can trust um, for one final skim through from them because we appreciate their input as well you know they may, they may catch something that you know, our wary eyes after looking at this over, 
you know, the last three, four, five months, some, um, you know, may have missed, but that'll be the final iteration before we start marketing and um, release this bad boy into the wild. Would it be more bullish to reward in stables or phantom? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the ecosystem is built around the spirit token. Pickle changed and liquid driver pays non-native. Uh, it's non-denominated. Lastly, curve the father of V pays in three pool. Yeah, again, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to this. Um, if this is something that you guys are wanting to hold a dialogue around. Absolutely, Home. You always raise good points. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But again, this would be a DAO-led decision. So it, I would recommend... And Nick, it actually, there is a sort of an aspect to it in our tokenomics where this does happen. Yeah. Um, if we want to dive into that a little bit. If you want to, I just, I was wondering if Sid was sort of like lingering around here, but he's not, so we can't get told off. Hey, Ish, I'll let you. Sid is not I'll here. Let, yeah, we're not going to get told <laughs> off, man. So should we do it? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, off you go. So <laughs> what, there's some pretty big changes to our tokenomic model. Um, and we took a lot of inspiration from Solidly. So we're using the V33 model, uh, which means that any emissions that uh, we emit for our spirit tokens will not dilute in spirit holders. Um, so if we emit, say, 1,000 spirit tokens and there's 100 in spirit total then and then say that there's 200 spirit total circulating that would mean that 500 of those spirit tokens that we're emitting would go to the in spirit holders and then 500 would go to the farms so uh, if you hold in spirit and it's locked for four years you don't get diluted so that's the first thing and then when it comes to fees, we have three different fees. So those are changing a little bit um, in solidly uh, LP holders or farmers, liquidity providers. They do not earn swap fees. Um, so in Spirit V1 right now, our liquidity providers all earn swap fees. So in solidly, that does not happen. Um, and what happens is those swap fees go to voting fees. So if you're holding in Spirit, um, and you vote for, say, the USDC die pool, you would earn all the swap fees on that pool. Um, so in a way, you can earn uh, native tokens. All you have to do is hold in spirit and then vote for the native token that you want. So if you want to earn Phantom and USDC, you'd vote for the Phantom USDC pool and you'd earn uh, Phantom USDC tokens. People are, I don't know if you can see the fireside chat, Heesh, but people are losing their shit over this. Um, <laughs> I was not with <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm just glad Sid's not here. He'd be murdering us right now. But Yeah, yeah but we, there's there's a lot more to dive into. There is a lot, um, there is a lot more. I, fun. <laughs> I feel like each week these people are gradually just getting bits of alpha out of us. Um, but so that model, uh, essentially that, that he has outlined here, folks, um, is part of our reciprocal model. So it's, it's about establishing positive feedback loops. So yes, you know, um, as he has alluded to here, you guys can now earn a plethora of tokens. Uh, but what we're wanting to do is make the spirit swap ecosystem as um, appealing as possible. So in order to earn, you have to lock, um, but this will start to generate real yield. Um, and, and, you know, that's what we're calling this mechanism. Um, so yeah, I'm glad Look, <laughs> looking at the fireside chat, you guys are all losing your shit over this. So I'm really glad that that was well received by the community. Um, you guys can kind of see what we're, what we're trying to build here and what we're trying to do here. Um, but essentially this is just one piece of the puzzle. Um, the overall mechanics of V2 are designed to establish full positive feedback loops um, that not only benefit the protocol, but benefit the uh, wider community as well. And especially, you know, the OG and spirit holders. Um, Heesh, thanks so much for giving everyone a detailed rundown about that. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Um, we'll see dive if in deeper later on. 
I know, man. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to like leak stuff for ages, but I just don't want to get in trouble. Uh, excited. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you, Heesh. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, if you guys have any more questions, again, uh, let's keep them rolling. Otherwise, we'll finish things up. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Seems like everyone's just totally stoked. Um, yeah. So as JJ's, uh, pointed out, you know, Vita was not just cosmetics. I mean, if anything, um, the cosmetics are cool and all. I, I, I realize everybody loves like a really solid UI. Um, the UI's kind of been done for a while now. What we've really been digging into is the nitty gritty of, of improving the tokenomics and the mechanics of the whole ecosystem. Um, but yeah, what uh, what we're really excited about as a core team is you know all of the underlying uh, ecosystem upgrades that V two will actually encompass. Uh, you know, one of which being you know the real yield uh, mechanic that Heesh has just highlighted. <clears throat> so it looks like we don't have too many more questions popping up. I'll just see if Captain Three Tard has anything because it looks like he's typing will it be a question or will it be a shit post 50 50 <laughs> i'm looking on with anticipation captain three tard Okay, no, it was a shit post. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome, guys. Well, look, we'll wrap up Fireside uh, for the week then. Um, you guys have enough alpha out of us now. We'll keep you at bay for another week. Um, but look, thanks everybody for uh, for joining us today. Um, really hope you guys appreciated the presentation, even though it was a bit, a bit of a fumble there. Um, but look, I'll go ahead and release a document like I did last week, allowing you guys to go um, through those transactions again and try them out for yourself step by step. Um, and yeah, look, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a fantastic week ahead. Uh -huh.